Ya YouTubers, Tazman here bringing you another episode of Fantasy Grounds from the ground up. And we are continuing down our line. Our last one was an entertainer druid gnome. And this time it looks like we are going to be a folk hero. And a... Wait, what was it? A druid? <laughs> a fighter! That, that actually makes sense there. Folk hero, fighter, and half elf. So, uh, there we go. Let's go ahead and uh, get our character going. And we'll go ahead and just pick a portrait. Doesn't really matter which one, to tell you the truth. Oh, the Pathfinder. Well, we can do a Pathfinder iconic one. Do we see anything at all that looks maybe like a half elf? These have names. Uh, I don't know, let's do this guy. He kind of seems like he could be a, a half elf, maybe. I couldn't really see. Well, I guess half elves don't necessarily have to have the pointy ears, do they? All right, so we can go ahead and close this. And actually, I wanted to see what oh, I keep forgetting. I just do Druid Gnome. So this is a uh, Warrior Half Elf. Fighter Half Elf, not Warrior. F I D H T E R, Fighter H A L F E L F. So here we go, our Fighter Half Elf. Uh, he is a folk hero, so we'll go ahead and add in his background. And then we will go ahead and add in his fighter, which will pop up this guy. And for that, we'll close that just for now. Go look at the skills he gets. As a folk hero, he gets animal handling and survival. As a fighter, uh, he's probably quite athletic. and kind of intimidating I would think let's go ahead and do that that, that seems to make sense and then of course he is a half elf Bing! there we go and I don't know which wait do we get fire half elf Does a how oh a half elf gets two more I I guess that's right uh so now let me go back here again so it looks like it's out of almost everything um let's see so doo -doo, let's he's gonna be pretty agile we already have athletics. let's do let's do perception and you'd have to have pretty good perception and then because it's a half elf we get to choose our two abilities so uh, being a fighter he definitely wants strength and maybe constitution seems pretty good and go back all right now hopefully we don't roll absolutely terrible so let's clear this and go ahead and hit our dice six times one two three four five six you gotta be kidding <laughs> we seriously rolled 13 four times in a row i wonder one two I mean it's different the secondary number is different but holy cow oh well I'm pretty sure <laughs> the 14 is definitely gonna go into his strength because that's how he hits or she hits I don't know uh, but wow 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 so if we go look at quick build, I'm pretty sure it says you want strength or dex, depending on if you're ranged or, or not. 
uh, as your highest depending on whether you want to focus on melee or archery well, I guess there you go uh, your next highest would be constitution which is exactly what we're thinking of with these so if we put this we get a 15 and here we get a 14 this is nuts <laughs> Oh, and he gets a plus two to cha. Maybe we should put the 11 there to give it uh, a 13. And then everything else is 13. Uh, well, not so good. Oh, whoops, it's C-L-A-R. That is, uh... Have we always had two lines here? Did I do something that made it get two lines? Huh. Alright, well, this is going to be a bit interesting. However, a fighter is going to be quite quick to make because we don't have to mess with spells at all. So, as you can see, we have our fighting style and second wind. Um, so, we'll actually go ahead and add in the... Uh, standard actions and consumables just to kind of take up a little bit more time but this guy I mean, okay so if you look at it uh, a, a general human being such as myself probably you if you're if you consider yourself a human being um, what they say is 10 is the average Average Joe is 10 on all of them. So he's still, or she is still, a little bit exceptional um, in all the traits. Just not very much. And I don't know. It, it'll be interesting uh, to see where it goes. So um, let's see. We have a, I think that's a 1D10, right? I can never remember just from the little picture. I guess if I look at that, I could say, yeah, that's 1d10. So that gives us 20, or no, that gives us 10 plus our con, which is 2, so that actually is 12. Well, there we go. Um, and I think that completes the first page and the second page, and now we're into here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to move fighter over here. So we got to choose a fighting style which I don't think is anything... Well, I guess you could have a, a class feature that actually contains that. Rustic Hospitality. Uh, since you come from the ranks of common folk, you fit in among them with ease. You can find a place to hide, rest, recuperate, along uh, among other uh, commoners, unless you have... Uh, unless you have shown yourself to be a danger to them they will shield you from the law or anyone else searching for you though they will not risk their lives for you so uh i guess in in towns and stuff that where you're known they might uh they might stick their necks out for you to protect you uh next we have fan ancestry that's part of our elven side and skill versatility this is what let us choose uh, our, our skills now we could have also done two skills in one like we could have done strength and strength even though that setup wouldn't allow that uh, we just choose strength tell it we're done or when we're done we just go remove one here and add one there but I think we do want our con and our strength to be as high as we can get it which is I mean, it's pretty nuts. This is a pretty interesting uh, character. So uh, our fae ancestry gives us advantage to those of being charmed and also makes us so that we can't be put to sleep. So that's good. Uh, let's see. So we have an artisan's tool. Um, I think if we go down here, we can get all the different tools doo -doo 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 -doo, to see what artisan's tools there are. There we go. Ah, so as a fighter, we cobbler's tools. You know what? I think we're gonna go for like, uh, he's a master chef. 
Uh, so if we go into inventory real quick, we can go ahead and add our artisan tools. Where'd it go? Cooking utensils. And cook utensils, I guess. So let's go ahead and do that. Control C. And we can, whoops, wrong one. Go here and say one type of artisan's tools would be cooking utensils. And then, of course, we also get a land vehicle. Uh, we'll just go ahead and say it's a horse. Uh, H O R S E. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and add a skill with per with a proficiency in here. So go up here, add one, and this will be a V. There we go. We'll go ahead and turn that off now. It's going to be proficient. Now, let's think really quick. Intelligence. Would it be intelligence? Book smarts? I mean, cooking really, I mean, you could have a touch or something. I'm going to say it's intelligence. Uh, so, which isn't, oh, actually, that's. Intel it. Oh, that's because it's plus one. Uh, yeah, because our, our intelligence will be plus one plus the proficiency. So we're in our own mind. We are a master chef. Uh, and no matter what kind of food we actually cook, we believe it is delicious. Um, despite what other people might. So we have all armor and shields. We have simple weapons and martial weapons. We have common elvish and... Uh, let's see, what would be another one that would be good? Let's do... What should we do? Let's do... I'm going to do Draconic. D-R-A-C-O-N-I just because I, I kind of imagine like maybe you were in the ranks of of a royal guard and I, I always imagine kind of a draconic leader there or something I don't know that that's what we're gonna go with okay so let's go ahead and that takes care of that now onto inventory let's go ahead and fix this real quick to say uh, copper pieces uh, silver pieces Electrum pieces, uh, gold pieces, and platinum pieces. All right, so so far all we have is our cooking utensils. Let's go ahead and see uh, background what we get. Doo, doo, doo. So it looks like we get an artisan tool, which we chose. We get a shovel and an iron pot. So let's go ahead and click on items. You, you might notice there's actually been some performance enhancements on this where they said that uh, things might be a little more efficient. So I think that came up a little bit faster than it normally does. Not 100% sure, but uh, we'll pretend. All right, hold on a sec. So uh, let's see. So we get a shovel. S H O V, a chauvel. Go and drag that up here. We get an iron pot. I R O N. Do we have pot? Yep, iron pot. Uh, actually, I don't want to do that because I'll copy it. Uh, let's go in iron pot. Uh, we get, which that goes once again with our cooking. An iron pot seems pretty good. Uh, a set of common clothes, C-L-O-T-H-E-S, uh, helps to actually type words, C-L-O-T-H-E-S, there we go, some common clothes, throw those in there, uh, let's see, and a belt pouch, so let's go ahead and do a pelt pouch, enter, uh, new, why is it not just showing a pouch? Component pouch. Usually it shows a pouch. That's weird. P-O-U-C-H. 
There we go. I'm not sure what I did. I think I had a space before it. I bet you anything that's what that was. All right, so this is a component pouch. Um, we will say this is on our belt because it says it's a belt component pouch. It's not actually going to put anything else there, but, well, unless we put things on our belt specifically. Um, and then that takes care of that, and we get 10 gold pieces. That's not very good. Most others seem to get 15 gold pieces. All right, then we can have chainmail, leather, longbow, and 20 arrows. So we can either have chainmail or we could have leather armor, longbow, and 20 arrows. Now, with our decks being a plus one, I think we just need to go for the chainmail. I mean, we're going to have disadvantage on our, our saving throws, or on our not saving throws. We're going to have disadvantage on our uh, skill checks. But uh, I think we need as much armor as we can because we're not that great. Uh, so C H I N chain. Alright, do we have chain mail in here? Let's do mail instead. M A I L. M A I L. Chain mail. There we go. All right, so go ahead and add that. So we have some equipped chain mail. That will jump our AC up to 16. <laughs> oh, boy. Next time I do the rolling, I'm just going to click it, wait for it to roll. I won't go so fast. Maybe I'll take like a three-second break between it. I don't know. Um, so then we get a martial weapon and a shield or two martial weapons. Well, if we have a shield, that gives us an additional two. That puts us up to 18 on our def on our um, thing. However, then we cannot be we can't be using two-handed weapon, which can actually do more damage. But I think that kind of is the way I would like to go. So let's go ahead and oh, I didn't necessarily want to close that. Let's go ahead and look at weapons, and we need something that is not large. Or it says two-handed. Uh, this is Marshall right here. So battle axe is versatile, where you can use it one-handed or two-handed. Uh, no, no, no. That seems like it'd be kind of cool. A nice battle axe. And these are all two-handed. This is a reach weapon. Does that actually specify? I would think a lance would be two-handed because you gotta kind of poke it out uh, to your enemy and stuff. Um, I kind of like the idea of a battle axe. So we get a battle. Oh, I, sh I already closed the thing, but let's go ahead and do a shield also. Uh, S H I E L D a shield. Did I have a space in front of it again? S H I E L D. I did. So we'll go ahead and have a shield. That should bump us up to 18, which is much more doable on how hard we are to hit. We don't hit really hard though. I mean, we only have a plus. Is it plus one or two? Like a plus two. <laughs> Ouch. All right, so we have our shield. Uh, let's see, we get a light crossbow and 20 bolts or two hand axes. I think we will do the light crossbow. C-R-O-S-S. -S. So not vicious, it's just a regular. Where's the regular? There's crossbow bolt, might as well grab, that's a case. Sure. It seems like C R O S S crossbow. Here's our bolts and the light. There we go. So there's our light crossbow bolt. We have a case for our bolts, so we could actually go like this just to make it nice and fancy. 
and make things look good. Whoops, control Z. And go shift end. Nope. I guess our thing was at the wrong spot. B O L T. Okay, now go shift home, control C, and we can put our crossbow bolts into our case. And you'll see it actually kind of staggers it. All right, uh, then we get a Dungeoneer's pack or an Explorer's pack. I think we're just going to go for an Explorer's pack. Let's see if that goes back real quick. It does. I don't know why it automatically puts that space in there. Uh, e X P L O R E R. Explorer's pack. Um, go ahead and do that. And that gives us all kinds of junk. I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to, we're not going to distinguish, oops, we're not going to distinguish between outside and inside of our backpack. Sometimes I do that. I don't feel like it. So we're just going to say this is part of our backpack. Uh, we keep our, I don't think we'd keep our bolts inside our backpack. Our clothes are in our backpack. Our cooking utensils are in our backpack. Our crossbow's not. Uh, the mess kit is. Iron pot is. Rations are. Our hemp and rope is. I almost said are. Our tinder box. Our torches are kind of on the side ish. And V. So now we click on that. Now you'll see everything sorts. Now, one real advantage if you haven't watched my other videos where I talk about. Uh, the location one big advantage to this is as you can see it shows that it's carried and if we come down here we can see that our current weight is 158 pounds right we can change the state of this from carried to equipped to not carried so if we say equipped we really can't equip the backpack as far as it's not a weapon um, but if we go to not equipped or not carried this means that you know we might have left it in camp or something we don't have it with us and you'll see it automatically reflects all the weight that uh, of the stuff that's in that backpack as being um, not counted against us now that definitely depends on if your DM is finicky and actually does encumbrance and and the other stuff I'm not really that finicky um, but yeah like I said it definitely could be and that's a good thing to do if you are really watching the weights and stuff uh, the notes section we can put in our gender all that uh, as a fighter I'm going to maybe be a neutral good and E U T R A L. He's not necessarily by the book, but he's also not kind of like Robin Hood. He he will. He believes in the balance of the good. Over over the balance, though, good should prevail. But uh, you know, not necessarily by the book. All right, so let's see. Did we close out? We did close out his background. So if we come down here, we can really quick go and look at his traits and stuff. Let's go and just roll it and see what we get. Uh, I'm going to have to shrink this window up a bit. All right, so we rolled a five, which is I'm confident in my own abilities and do what I can to instill confidence in others. So I'm kind of a good guy, it sounds like. So that's good. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. Can I delete that? There we go. Uh, and then let's do a second one real quick, which is going to be a five again. Nope, it's not. Uh, it's going to be a four. Uh, I have strong sense of fair play and always try to find the most equitable solution to an argument or to arguments. All right, that looks good there. Let's go ahead and look at our, where'd, our, where'd I put our thing? A oh, full keyword right here. All right, our ideal next. What drives us? Respect. People deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. 
that's pretty good because we actually chose neutral good as our our thing there uh, let's check what our bond is as a folk hero a4 my tools are symbols of my past life and I carry them so that I will never forget my roots so maybe his parent his mom or dad was a a real good cook even though he's not the greatest uh, and then of course we have our flaw everybody has a flaw so the people who knew me when I was young know my shameful secret so I can never go home again who knows what oh what am I doing I need the three <laughs> so uh, obviously it looks like he's gonna be avoiding going home so if they if the adventure leads to his hometown he might be like eh, maybe not let's let's go do this other one instead <laughs> all right so that takes care of that uh, and now let's go look at our different things here so our feature uh, which I guess we weren't done here we can actually come in here and say archery obviously not uh, defense while you're wearing armor you gain a plus one bonus to AC that could that bump us to 19 dueling when you're wielding a melee hand in one hand and no other weapon you gain a plus two uh, two damage rolls with that weapon that could actually be pretty good because we have our shield um, so we can have our shield in our second hand great weapon fighting when you roll a one or two on damage die for an attack you make with a melee weapon that you're wielding with two hands and now we won't be using two hands protection when a creature you can see attacks another target other than you that is within five feet of you you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on that attack roll you must be wielding a shield so that's kind of like a shield bash you see someone swinging at someone else you bash them with their shield and then they have to uh they have to roll uh, with disadvantage uh, when you engage in two weapon fighting, you can you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the second attack. Normally, if you have an offhand weapon, you don't get to add your modifier to that unless it's unless it's specified like it is here. So, as far as all these go, I think dueling kind of seems most like our character, which means when you're wielding a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapon you get a plus two bonus I wonder how it's gonna actually if, if it can automatically do that or if we have to keep track of that I mean I can think of ways that we might be able to do that if our shield isn't stowed but then you also have to somehow tell it what weapon you're doing. I don't know. Let's just uh, see. And maybe we just create a third copy of our weapon uh, for when it's in dueling mode. Cause we, so we're going to have two copies. We're going to have the regular attack. Uh, we're going to have the versatile attack. And then maybe we create one that's called dueling where we get to use that if we have our shield up. Or if we have our shield present, I guess, is probably better. So, uh, I think... Dueling's the way we want to go with that. And like I said, I'm not sure if there's a built-in Rob Tui thing for the, um, for the class feature. Uh, Second Wind, I do know there is one for that. And I know there's one for that. So, I think that's all we need here. Let's go ahead and go into action. You can see we have the battle axe uh, and we have the 1d8 slashing. We did see that. Can you not do it this way? Ugh, you can't. Wait, what if we tell it to add? No. Uh, all right, well. So it would be a bonus. Let's go ahead and add two weapons. Uh, we will call this one. Why's that one got a little bag on it? And that one doesn't. I'm not sure. 
Let's go say this is equipped. Whoops. And this will also be battle axe. So control C, control V, and we'll say versatile or two hand maybe. Two H A N D. So if you're ever going to do this, or if you're using your crossbow, technically you need to put away your shield. So this will be when we're doing two hand, and I think it said. Uh, didn't it say that it was 1d10? Can we do something like that? No. Alright, so let's go ahead and we will add... I meant to do that one actually. Okay, so our attack is just our base, which is what it said. However, our damage is going to be a 1d10. We have the plus R modifier, which is going to be strength. And we have the bonus of two. Or wait, no, 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 no. We're not doing the bonus yet. So uh, that's all we have to do there is close that down now. And now we have our 1D10 2 if we're wielding it two-handed. Now let's go ahead and add another one. We're going to hit V. I believe it's still on the clipboard. We'll do battle axe and we'll say dueling. D U E O I N G. Is that how you spell it? And this one will be what we were just doing. So 1D10, base is strength, plus an additional 2. And that's only on damage. All right. So now you actually see it said, oh, it's not 1d10, it's 1d8. Why does that one have the thing and the other one doesn't, though? I'm not, I'm not clear why it did that. And this one had it. It's just when I add a new one, it, I don't know. Stuff to look at. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and change that to the 1d8. Actually, can I clear the dice? Clear the dice. There we go. 1d8. There we go. Plus 4. So when we're just holding our shield, we actually get an additional. And there's our crossbow. We have 20 bolts, so we'll keep track of that. And I think that takes care of our, our battle axe, which is kind of a complex weapon as far as that goes. Okay, so now... Let's go look at spells real quick. We will go to 5A class features. This is where all our actions, standard actions, so we'll go ahead and do action dodge first. Do what we normally do, change it to S-T-A-N-D-A-R-D-A-C-T-I-O-N-S, -A 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 standard actions, and you have to spell it right. I mean, I guess you don't, but it looks better. And we can get rid of spells. All right, so we have standard action dodge, we have standard action help, we have standard action hide, and we have standard action ready. We can go ahead and clear out these, and we can also go ahead and get rid of all this action stuff. And then this is where we're also going to put our stow shield one. So let's go ahead and add a power and I guess I could have done it right there, huh? Let's do it there instead. Let's add it here for a new power. We will call this S-T-O-W-S-H-I-E-L-D. So what we need to do uh, is when we stow our shield, our, like if we're gonna use our crossbow or if we're gonna use our battle axe with two hands, we need to put our way our shield, which even though it doesn't change it here, it will actually change it in the back end so that we do not have an 18 on our AC. And the way we do that is we can close that. We right click here. Oops, not here. We right click here. We say add an action and we want to add an effect. Now if we scroll down we can see here's our effect. Click on the magnifying glass and the description of this effect will simply be uh, S T O W S H I E L D, and you'll see the format here says description, then conditions, and any modifiers. So, Stow Shield, we're going to do a semicolon. We're going to say AC 
colon minus 2 and that's going to change our armor class it's going to subtract 2 from it uh, we don't have any modifiers to worry about this will last for one round and the target is always yourself you can't put away someone else's shield and then it it's more like a cantrip where you can fire it off as many times as you want you don't need to like if uh, you know it expends on the next action next roll once per mod uh, I missed that one or never we want never <laughs> so now what happens when we click on this uh, when we're in the combat mode if we click on this it will add an effect to our character that will last for one round a duration of one round uh, to make our our AC minus two so whatever everything it says we have on our character sheet but then it knows I'm minusing two from all that so there we go wow we're at 35 maybe I shouldn't have done this part um, but we're almost done anyway so and now we want to come here we're gonna say source we are a fighter dun, 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 fighter right here so we have our second wind and like I said I'm not a hundred percent sure some of these fighting styles do have things because they have special things to them but we kinda took care of our dueling up there so we will go ahead and change this guy now let's go back to regular mode and regular mode actually I guess I wanted on group and we will call this CLA class F-E-A-T-U-R-E-S class features do that and now you can see when we click off it's now called class features and what second wind does is you have to say you burn it when you use it but you actually get to do 1d10 plus 1 to yourself as a heal so pretty good there okay so uh, that takes care of that and then the final thing we have is our faint ancestry I'm not gonna do the consumables if you wanna know about consumables, consumables go watch the one where we I believe created the barbarian because that was the first one and we went all all out in details on it so now we're gonna choose uh, racial traits we're gonna go ahead and say we are a half elf and you can see we have half elf ancestry we're gonna drag that in here we will go ahead and call this R A C I A L T R E I T S and then click off of it and get rid of the spells one and there we go so now we actually have our fighter go ahead and click there to expand it now we pretty much I think this pretty much covers our fighter with minusing you know uh, the the consumables and stuff um, the one thing I forgot to do that I always do with my characters I'm not sure is I usually give them a a potion of healing that of course I need to get rid of that stupid space P -O -T -I -O -N, potion of healing so let's go back to inventory real quick and we'll go ahead and throw that there and that is in our backpack so let's do uh, B A backpack did that work potion of healing backpack we have one alright so guys I think that takes care of it um, hopefully if I get a chance shortly after this video is released I will have a video talking about no actually it should already have been happened I forgot when uh, this one releases on Thursday so uh, be sure to watch my uh, hopefully yesterday has a has the bonus video instead of today and I am announcing the great big game giveaway winners so uh, be sure to check that out because if you joined my discord and you still should and can because if someone doesn't claim it in a timely manner they go back into the pool to be drawn from and someone else will be drawn so you could always uh, still be able to uh, be eligible so that's it uh, if you enjoyed this video be sure to uh, 
leave a comment down below thumbs up is always appreciated aside from that comment like and subscribe follow me on Twitter check out my discord like I said before in order to win you need to be uh, a member of my discord and with 57 games and I think I only have about 70 uh, people in my discord and not all of them are active there's a pretty good chance that you even signing in late or joining late will be able to get the prize so uh, be sure to do that and that's it until next time I'll be seeing you later bye